Live from Shadowmere Studios, it's Talkie Box, and once you pop, the fun don't stop. That's oh. true. It's very true. Man. Yeah. You can't eat just one. Oh, uh, we should have wrote that down. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's my fault. Yep. I definitely blame you. Yeah. I mean, you know, we get into the, we start just spitballing, you know. Yeah. Uh, our own original slogans. Our own original slogans. Right. That we did not steal from anywhere. That no, we didn't absolutely. take from any other source. Nope. And it's just hard to stop at one. Yep. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> and once you pop, the fun don't stop. Yeah, I said that. Yeah, while well, I was agreeing with you. Right. Cool. Talkie by reiterating box. it. Yeah, so I'm Dave. Dave. And with me is Jason. Jason. And Justin. Justin. And that's usually who's here, but we also have Mickey back. Hey. Hey. Good to see Mickey again. Appreciate you coming out. Yeah, thanks, Mickey. You been all right? I've been living the dream. Yeah? Which one? Uh, the one where I'm in my sweatpants playing video games. That's a great dream. That's it's a good dream. I, really good I, dream. I, I dream that a lot. <laughs> Big fan of that. Yeah. So I had an interesting week since last time we saw each other. Well, tell um, us about it, Dave. Do tell. Yeah. So nothing, like Tuesday we did the show. Wednesday, Thursday, nothing really big happened. Like we were... Okay. So uh, it was a slow start to your interesting Yeah. Week. Wednesday, not much. Thursday... Um, I broke my toe. <laughs> okay. Oh. I, I went, I was like turning, just going to my bathroom. I slammed my foot into like the, the corner of the, of the wall. And I thought I just stubbed my toe, but it still hurt like half an hour later, an hour later, the next morning. <laughs> Did it eventually start turning colors? No, it swelled up a lot, but that's it. So I go to the doctor. I'd been planning to go to the doctor anyway because I had this weird rash on the back of my legs. Which I figure is probably just like a heat rash or something. No, they're, they're probably not connected, though. Yeah, I didn't think so. Um, so I go I go to the doctor, and I'm in the room where they take your temperature and stuff, and the, and the woman takes my, my, my blood pressure, and it comes up like 141 over like 100 or something like that. And she goes, oh, that's high. I'm like, okay. You you should do something about that. I was like, well, quit stressing I don't, me out, lady. I don't know what those numbers mean. I know they're related to blood pressure. I don't know what they mean. What what should they be? Should, well, that top one should be less than 140. I'm like, well, I'm close. And the other one should be like around 90. Okay. So you should do something about that. Okay. What was, what was the recommendation? There wasn't. Just She just looked at me like I'm an idiot for not doing anything about it immediately. Do something about it right now. That's what she, that's basically how it was. She's so like, your just blood pressure was too high. broke into jumping jacks. It's <laughs> right in front of her. So your blood pressure is too high? Apparently my blood pressure is a high. Okay. According it, to her. It's from how much salt intake you're taking in. Oh. That's what I was thinking. Like, I, I did eat like a whole bunch of boiled peanuts last week. Mm-hmm. And so that was probably the thing. I've been kind of stressed at work, like a day job. Salty mostly because I hate it. Um... But, Salty hate. Yeah. So I got through that part, and then I'm they they put me in a room to wait for the doctor. There is no magazines in here. It's just me and all the medical equipment, which right. I didn't feel like touching this time because I've done that in the past, and they get really weird about it. So I'm just playing on my phone. I'm on. I'm in there for like 15 minutes, and finally I hear like the the knock, and the doctor walks in and kind of looks up at me. He goes, "You're not who I'm looking for," and then he just walks out. Like, I would have gotten pretty frustrated. Like, at that what the point. hell was this? <laughs> and so, like, you were exactly who I was looking exa- for. Yeah, I, like, I assume it's just some guy in scrubs. I don't know who the hell he is. <laughs> and and so he leaves, and I'm in there for another like 20, 25 minutes, just on my phone, like whatever. I got nothing to do today. I don't care. Man. And and he comes back in. He goes, "Okay, now I can talk to you." Like, All right, cool. He's like, "What's up?" Like, I got this rash, and possibly unrelated, I broke my toe, or I think I did. And he's like. Cool, let's check it out. So he checks it out. He's like, yeah, rash. Cool. I'll give you some cream. Toe, x-ray. So I go down to x-ray, and this lady's, you know, taking pictures of my foot with the x-ray. Of course. Halfway through, she goes, so how'd you hurt your toe? Like, well, you know, I kind of slammed on the corner while I was walking to the bathroom. She goes, why'd you do that? And not in a joking, like, <laughs> why'd you do that? <laughs> it was silly, it was like a serious question. And I was like, you know, I just wanted to come here and spend some money, I guess. What the fuck do you want from me? It's my Tourette's. It's incredibly yeah. active this time. And she's like, oh, okay. Like, didn't laugh, like nothing. She had no humor whatsoever. And then I go back in the in the room, and a couple minutes later, doctor comes in and goes, yeah, your toe's broken. I'm like, cool. What do we do about that? He's like, not much we can do. So I'm going to lose it? Or <laughs> what do you... 
It's like, no, no, just tape it to the other one. So I don't lose it? <laughs> so it doesn't grow back weird. <laughs> so that's what I've been doing for the past week, or almost week, is just taping one toe to another. A buddy which tape. feels Yeah, that's what you call it, buddy taping. And, uh, and it just feels weird in my, in my sock. Because they, you know, typically... I would never... I knew I had that toe. I was never aware of the toe. Wh- which toe is it? It's the one next to my pinky toe on the right foot. Okay. Um, Your index toe. No. No. The ring it's toe. It's more the ring toe, yeah. The ring That's toe. the one you're taping your big toe to? I'm, it's not my big toe. <laughs> oh, I thought it was your big toe that no. was broken. No, it's the ring toe is broken. Okay. And so it's next to the, As the middle toe. As you can tell, I, guess, I yeah. do not pay attention. Not at all. Not yeah. even remotely. Yeah, so that happened. Later on, I go to Burger King, and I'm in the drive-thru, and I order my food, and the lady goes, all right, pull up to the first window for your total, which they've never done before. It's always been the second window. There's never been anybody in the first window. The first window is used for like storage, apparently. Yeah, there's like, like a today, bread rack laid up. Yeah, there. always. There's on this always day, a bread rack. she's like, "Yeah, it's pulled to first. So I go up there, like very concerned. Like, and there's this nice, cute girl, and she she goes, "Okay, your toes. Oh my God, your hair." I was like, "What? Is it on fire?" She goes, "No, I love your hair." Like, hey, shit. All right, cool. Thank you. Well, that doesn't seem like a bad thing, Dave. And she's like, "Here's your total." I'm like, "Thank you." And then I go on my merry way. And she's like, "Can I have your number?" It was. A, she did not. She may have written it on a receipt or something, but I, didn't, I didn't see it. <laughs> you did the receipt, right? I yeah. absolutely did. Yeah. yeah. Dave, so, you gotta look out for the little signs, man. I didn't. Yeah. You know, little signs. And she'll she'll never be there again. They'll never ask me to pull that window again. No, she's not never. never going. What to are you gonna find again. a front window lady again? <laughs> never, never again. I haven't seen a front window lady since <laughs> the nineties. Right. I don't know why they still build them. Front window ladies, or for, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm pretty sure that it was just like one of those fluke Friday the Thirteenth esque moments mm-hmm. where the first window was open and the ghost of the last girl who worked <laughs> the first window has been haunting that building. The girl that died in a freak far, fryer accident or something. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And uh, she was just there, mm-hmm. you know, trying to find a soul mm. to uh, consume. So where does this have up? anything to do with your broken toe? No, it just happened on the same day, like an uh, hour later. All right. I was waiting for these two stories. I showed her my toe, and then we, we <laughs> right? made sweet love in that first window. and I was waiting for the next <laughs> yeah. If you're out there, yeah. so Dave's toe needs a kiss. That was that was Friday. Exodune was this weekend. We went to Exodune. Me and Jason went to Exodune. Mickey wasn't there. Justin's never been there. So what is um, Exodune, Dave? Exodune is the LARP think- that Jason and I have been participating in. As long as you've known us. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. As long as you've known me, anyway. I've, you yeah. might have known him longer than that. I've known but. him longer than I've known about Exodune, because I remember Exodune's conception. Yeah. Um, but, no, I've never been. Yeah, you should go. Yep. It's a great time. You should go. You so, should. LARPing, I, th- I feel as though uh, if we introduce ourselves to our audience every day, we might as well explain what a LARP is, because... Every day? Every day. Look up LARPing on Google. There it is. Or exodune.com. It's an acronym. Now, we talked about it in, like, episode nine. Yeah, um, one one of the pre-video episodes. Back when we used to announce every episode as the first episode. Which we still do. This is our first episode. So that people couldn't keep track of which episode they were on. Yeah, in case we had a really shit episode, we'd be like, oh, it's our first episode. It's our first episode. (laughs) We're just learning how to work this thing. It's electricity this magical box thing here i We're don't know still learning. but it's an acronym it stands for live action role play yep and it spans anything from from fantasy era mm-hmm. like dungeons and dragons style to actual like historical recreations of yeah. the civil war to futuristic science fiction battles in a pretend space station right you know, like now I wonder, just having this thought. You know, you should do ever, is talk into your microphone. Has anyone ever done a LARP, mm-hmm. like around like detective case, like done like a detective LARP? Technically, uh, I think that's called mystery you, dinner you, like, theater. Yeah, murder mystery theater kind of thing. That's that that would be LARPing. Would it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, just you're... like just like reenactments are are also called LARPs, and in fact, in Europe they don't really make a distinction between reenactments and LARPing, uh, whereas we kind of do here. But Understandably so. I think, I think, but explain what you were actually going for. I mean, it, basically that sort of thing where mm-hmm. you're, 
you get a lot of people who are all playing different roles, and it wouldn't necessarily be like a clue scenario, though mm -hmm. that would be cool, but I'm pretty sure that that's kind of the mystery dinner theater thing. Uh, but just having a like clues and different, they may be serial murders. Yeah. Having somebody be the serial killer, and uh, I think they'd definitely be shorter one-offs. It wouldn't be an extended sort of yeah. Well, that's play after play after play. That's something that that could and has been done at LARP before. It typically, as something within the LARP itself, like a smaller yeah, quest right. or because something. Because imagine like that. trying to have forty gumshoes <laughs> that are all sleuthing these clues, like. You've only Rooting got crime scenes. Yeah, they're gonna come in there. They're gonna destroy the evidence. You're gonna leave like very specific things laid out for people to find, and then you're gonna have forty people come in a giant wave <laughs> with magnifying glasses and <laughs> stupid hats. Oh, and that sounds awesome. Yeah, I'm really excited. Let's let's make that happen. I mean, it will be awesome until they like they're like, all right, well, why didn't we figure it out? And they'll blame you. Yeah. It'll be your fault. It won't be because they messed up the crime scene. You should have expected that. You should have anticipated that how? and created multiple crime scenes. For <laughs> how, how do you know that I didn't expect that? Because I know you. Yeah. yeah. Touche. Right. Your right. printer doesn't even work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's an inside joke. Insiders. Yep. <laughs> so, so we, we had we had X Dune this weekend. It was hot and rainy, and it was hot or rainy. Now, the, the game that we play, Exodune, and, and Mickey plays uh, occasionally as well. Yep. Um, he's a, an avid LARPer. You you play several games, I, I believe. I do. And see, you guys talk about being hot and everything. There is uh, indoor LARPs as well. So there's two different yeah. two different flavors of LARP. You have your salon LARP, which is more of your tabletop environment. Mm -hmm. It's usually more social themed. Is that, I think I've also heard of a parlor LARP. Parlor LARP Same, is okay. salon LARP, parlor yeah. LARP. It's usually more of the Machiavellian type political structures that you okay. wind up getting into, where the buffer LARP is, let's go hit my friends and right. stuff, and it's more combat focused. Uh, so the salon LARP can definitely, like, I have a lot of friends that can't be physically active, and, and they still <laughs> get a lot of, uh, there we go, sorry about that. Yeah. They still get a lot of the the good role play and stuff right. like that from the, the salon or parlay LARP. And you also have the complete opposite of the salon LARP, which is full combat LARPing. Like the which, SCA. And yeah, or like uh, Dagger Ear is kind of like... Yeah, where, where there's, there's zero There's virtually story. no role play at all. <laughs> I think the, mo the most role play is like, you can pick some, you can pick a name for I, yourself. I, I, I think that's the kind of uh, the kind of LARP that they showed in... Um, what's that movie with Paul oh, Rudd? Role, role Models? Role Models. It's similar. That's... Uh, that was that, a boffer LARP. That was a boffer LARP. It wasn't completely role or uh, completely combat. There was some role play aspects to it. That was a very stripped down version of what LARPing actually is. Is what they showed in role models, or at least what we do. Or yeah, Exodune is very sp specific in it. It is about storytelling. Yeah. So the whole game involves big stories being written up, and then the players getting pushed into being involved in those intricate stories. A lot of LARPs are just random encounters. You and your buddies get dressed up in whatever period clothing, and you hang out and random situations will occur to you, and generally you'll fight or talk your way out of them. Uh, whereas, you know, the, the game that we play is, is much more involved, much more intricate, but it's also a lot more difficult to grasp every aspect of it because it is so, so vast. big yeah. yeah i was actually reading an article about it because i think it, it it definitely draws some similarities to uh dungeons and dragons am i right like there are some similarities in terms of uh, uh like skills and uh yeah. abilities attributes things like depending that. on how the game is built uh the one that Jarrett and i built is very similar to uh, advance Dungeons and Dragons Second Edition, but well, I was reading this article that was saying how uh, like Dungeons and Dragons has uh, now developed uh, an online like digital version of the game yeah. to like have like a a digital dungeon master and things like that where it presents the scenarios for you okay. and, and you can go in and build your character and it tracks everything for you so it's not just on paper anymore it's essentially the same game only it's all on the computer like you track everything on the computer so wizards of the coast the guys who make the original D, &D have yeah. been pushing similar for years 
uh, before the Roll20 system came out that they're using now that you can actually, you know, have dice on. They had what they called a ISRP, which is like Internet uh, something role play. Uh, okay. And it was just a chat server mm. that you would roll your D&D character on. And they had little moderators and stuff like that. So you could do everything uh, but roll. Right. And then eventually they stepped up to having dice spots on the chat. Mm. And now they're pushing the, the Roll20 where it's more online. But that online experience that you're going to have is still going to be more more like a tabletop game than an actual LARP. But I, I think that would be that would be pretty cool in the sense that it's it is that tabletop, but you have one you can play with anybody anytime. Yeah. But it also it's keeping track of all of this stuff for you. Yeah. You you don't have to carry around binders full of papers and bestiaries and things like that, where it's all on that screen and you can play with your friends. Right. I've only ever tried D and D I think once or twice. And uh I don't know. It it, it didn't go well so much for me. But uh that's cuz um you were playing with people that were kind of dicks. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah. Was and one I, of them you? Uh I was He was actually, he was trying not to be a dick. Uh, he was actually the least dickish one. I was the dungeon thing. master, so I was okay. trying to include him into right. the party and the party wasn't having it. Mm. And I was like they wanted no part of me. And it was really just <laughs> one player in the party who was giving him a hard time. Milf's was, acid arrow. But uh, he... <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that was his name? Uh, that was something that he said because he was looking at uh, one of our fellow players. Had his wife playing with us. And uh, she was wearing sort of a revealing top. And he was looking at her when he was casting a spell, and he said, Milf's Acid Arrow. <laughs> and we all had a really good chuckle about it. Now, there's only like 1% of nerds are going to even understand what that means. But Melf, M-E-L-F, uh -huh. is a well-written mage from, I think, Forgotten Realms or Dragonlance. Okay. One of the AD&D &D campaigns. Okay, it's, gotcha. it's a and d staple. Hmm. And this spell is something he created, and it was named after him. So it is called Melf's Acid Arrow. Okay. This guy was looking at our friend's hot wife, <laughs> and instead of casting Melf's Acid Arrow, he Freudian slipped yeah. and said, I'd cast Milf's Acid Arrow. And, you know, everybody just stops, <laughs> and we all look, and then we look at her cleavage, and then we look back at him, and we're like... We get it. All right, all right. <laughs> Did it work? Did the spell work? I think so. I, I think so. Yeah. I, I don't fucking remember that well. <laughs> so uh, something there everything <laughs> leading up to where, <laughs> where that happened. Well, and then, uh, whatever, I'm know. familiar well, with the campaign yeah, and, the, yeah, yeah. and the world setting, but <laughs> as far as what the players did, I ah, right. who cares. So uh, yesterday, fun fact, I'm not sure if you guys know this, was National Emoji Day. Yeah, I didn't know or care about that. No, right? You know what <laughs> I also didn't know or care about? Wait, I did know. Still don't care, though. They made a movie. Yeah. They did. Emoji about movie. emojis. Do they what? lit up the the um, the Empire State Building in emoji yellow to commemorate National Emoji Day. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that cost someone a lot of money. I really do too. Same and I hope it the wasn't taxpayers. Movie. With the emoji movie, I'm hoping the same thing that it costs somebody a lot of money and they can live in their broken shame. Uh, you know it's going to make money. And what's what's uh, like, the proper way to money. celebrate Emoji Day? Uh, Send emojis, man. I guess. Yeah. I or swear know. them off, whatever. I don't know. Is there an emoji it, lint you can do? Don't use them. Is that TJ Miller? <laughs> I think that is a great idea. Yeah. Next time lint comes around, that should is be the thing. Swearing off emojis for Listen, forty days. Forty days, no emojis. <gasps> I've How been, are you going to survive? I've been doing that most of my life. A long time. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've gone forty days so without the, using the emojis. emoji movie. That's. T.J. Miller is the voice there. I think it's probably a voice. Huh? Probably he's a voice in everything, right? T.J. Miller, yeah. big fan of that. Are we gonna wait film. for you to? I'm not doing that. I mean, don't wait uh, for me. I think he does uh, Moe's, right? Welcome he, to Moe's. Is it Moe's? I don't know. I'm pretty sure he he does the Moe's voice. He might. I know he was Slim Jim for a bit with that genie. Mm. That was a funny one. Um, so today, actually, something funny happened, and by funny, I mean kind of shitty. 
on the way home from day job to be here at the studio, I rear-ended this girl. Oh no, Dave. Yeah. Uh, we were we were at a red light, and there was a fire truck over here on this side. And just as our light turned green, the fire truck lights up its lights and hits the siren and starts going. So she has to slam on her brakes. I slam on my brakes. Just just not a you know a second too late. And I hit her. Not hard. It did a little bit of damage to her bumper. Nothing to mine. Mine was totally fine. Um, but, you know, we, we she's like, yeah, let me get your insurance information and stuff. Okay, cool. So we pull over. She did not want to involve the cops, which was totally fine with me. Um, she was kind of cute, and I might actually ask her out. Damn, dude. You're, you're don't drop the ball. Yeah. You know, you like, got to make something I did, happen. I, I went to take a picture of the damage on my phone, but the lens on my phone is broken. And so she took a picture. She's like, "I have your phone number and your information. I'll just, I'll just text it to you." I'm like, no problem. That sounds great. That's, so, that's a weird way to start a relationship. Yeah, but she, I don't. She was cute. There have been weirder <laughs> ways, I'm sure. We were at a red light, and I rear-ended her. Yeah. And I've been rear-ending her ever since. <laughs> that's gross. Don't be gross. <laughs> what? That was delightful. We didn't like that. No. Uh, whatever. <laughs> I mean, it felt kind of predictable. You know, it's fun. You're 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 sitting there drawing an emoji. Yep. Instead of actually like typing one. <sighs> yeah. Yep. But anyway, that's been my. Oh, something interesting happened yesterday. So for the first time in a long time, I, I work at a restaurant. I've mentioned that before. I won't say which one yet. Day job. Yeah. Uh, and Wait till you leave. I I served yesterday and today for the first time in over a month. They've had me in this hot ass grill line forever. And I was actually serving. And yesterday, there was a guest that came in. Didn't sit in my section, but sat at another, this girl's table wearing a Hawaiian shirt and a skirt. Not a kilt, because kilts come down longer than mid-thigh, where this man's skirt came to. Um, shave legs and a pistol on his hip. And you didn't think to get a picture? Uh, lens is broken on my phone. You didn't ask for his number? I did not ask for his number. <laughs> Uh, I did not rear-end him. No. Because uh, he had that I, gun. I feel like you would have had the opportunity uh, to if he had I mean, dropped with something. With those he, dolphin smooth legs, he, there's a good chance <laughs> you could have. Dolphin smooth. That, he was hitting on his server, though. So I should have. I should. I think she should have. That's got to uh, cut down on draw time, though. You know what I mean? You the skirt? Them, what? No, the smooth <laughs> legs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It makes you much quicker, I think. Uh -huh. Through the water, possibly also through the air. Mm -hmm. And so. you know he has another gun. <laughs> you can't see <laughs> Quick access. <laughs> it's the inner thigh holster? Mm -hmm. Yeah, inner thigh. Yeah. <laughs> really high inner thigh towards the back. His butt. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I thought we weren't going gross. And mm. then we did. Yep, we sure did. Yeah. Yeah. Dolphin smooth. Man. You wrote <laughs> dolphin smooth. Okay. Uh. <laughs> and beautiful cursive. Yeah, that's, that's from uh, Abraham in The Walking Dead. Sure enough. Well, it's probably not from him, but they uh, they talk about yeah. uh, Abraham from The Walking Dead as Dolphin Smooth. Dolphin. I think there's like a, a sex scene, possibly, uh -huh. uh, where Abraham, you, you see a good portion of his uh, buttocks <laughs> yep. and back. Yep. And I think uh, Hardwick. Yep. H Hardwick does. Hardwick. Chris, Chris Hardwick. Yeah, he does The Talking Dead. And, yeah, and a Bane impression that we talked about, right. and um, he he mentioned Dolphin Smooth hashtag Dolphin Smooth. Oh, okay. And it just stuck with me. It stuck. <laughs> Every time so I true. see a hairless ginger butt. Yeah. How do you know it's ginger when it's hairless? Because you know curtains and the drapes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you would uh, not be surprised at no? how many. Naked ginger butts he sees. Uh, Plenty of ginger butts. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Other people might. They. Mm -mm. <laughs> so there's big news, right? Yeah. Game of Thrones. Uh huh. Uh -huh. It's How back. about that? You guys all watch that? I did. You did? I did. I didn't. I am you not didn't? caught up. Not uh, caught so up? So I, I didn't watch the new episode yet. Well, people are excited. People are excited. There's a lot of buzz. Yeah. And if we were a popular and or trendy show, we'd probably talk about it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so so we're else? talking about it. <laughs> we, we, we can totally talk about it. Do you want to go spoiler free? Yeah. Let's go spoiler right, free let's... since at least two of us have not seen it. All right. We will go spoiler free. But so how this... far back spoiler free do we need to go? Like you haven't seen any 
Game of Thrones, right? No, I saw up to the Red Wedding, and at that point I got so upset that I didn't watch... You got upset with what? The Red that Wedding. That people died? It was just a lot all at once. Yeah. And uh, it was a very frustrating... You got overwhelmed with overwhelmed, the show? Overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. <laughs> Just I was sitting here. very committed to these characters. And then they all come on. It was a rough time in my life. Game of Thrones was my reprieve. <laughs> so but if I, the I, Red I, Wedding upsets you, uh, this this might not be the season for you. <laughs> um, you know all those people you like? Yeah, they're yeah, gone. None of them survive. I, I know that. It's just, it, it was one of those instances where I'm like, oh, damn, like, uh, what? Like, that's unbelievable. Yeah. I'm, all right, I just need to take a second. I need to take a break, and I just never picked it back up. Right. But it's it's one of those things, right? It's uh, R.R. R. Martin. George R.R. R. 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 Martin. And he, uh, he basically started this intricate, in-depth political fantasy mm-hmm. uh, series. Uh, it got picked up yeah. by HBO yeah. before he finished the series. Right. And now they're like writing the ending together because he didn't ever write the finishing books. Yeah. So it, the, it took him so long to write these books, and admittedly, it took me a long time to read these books. Uh, yeah, they it, and I've seen that happen before, actually, where like they you know someone's picked up a show or a movie or something before the books are done, and they're like, I, I don't know, I guess we'll just figure it out. It's when like we a get there. show based on books and book to follow based on show, yeah. like. Well, I mean, they, they kind of did that with Harry Potter, only Harry Potter finished mm-hmm. before they started coming out with the last movies. You know, yeah. they, I think they put out the first movie. After but do you the think they were book. influencing her? Like I, how I, they were going to bring out Voldemort, how they were going to finish Harry Potter? Or do you think that that was J.K. Rowling's? Like, no, I this think, is my brainchild. I'm taking this how I want it. I, I think, think it would be impossible not to be influenced. I don't know. I think I have a, a feeling that J.K. Rowling went to them like, this is how it's going to be. Oh, I mean, she was on the set all the time. I think she well, didn't have a the, lot of say. But like when you know they're making the movies, she's like, "Don't do that." I, I see. I can. No, I can yeah, agree. She, I, they, they did do things like that. Having read both the Harry Potter books and seen the Harry Potter movies, and having read all of the Game of Thrones books and seen the show, I'm, I'm I'm up to date on the show. Right. I will say there are a lot more consistencies with the Harry Potter oh, books yeah. and series than there are with the Game of Thrones right. books and series. Like. Bron is one of my favorite examples in the show. Uh, Bron is like, I have friends. It's like that's my dude. That's my favorite character in the books. You're like, who? <laughs> like he's got like you know a chapter. He hangs yeah. out with uh, Tyrion. Tyrion, yeah. You know, but they've they've taken a lot more mainly because the actor can sing. Mm-hmm. So anytime they enter a new song, he gets that voice role. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's a. <coughs> I did. Not I know there's a, a lot of stuff in that they left out of the sh- uh, uh, of the show that was in the books. Uh, even even so far as like leaving characters out and and oh very and much stuff so. like that. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna say that. That's definitely a spoiler. <laughs> yep. Hold up. Yeah. Who's who's Wait. the the blue collar guy that uh, works with Jamie Lannister all the time? The the one that taught him how to fight again. That was Braun. That was Braun. Oh God, that's yeah. I was trying because there's so many names and so, they're yeah. all fantasy style names. In the stuff, books, so. there's over a thousand named characters. So it's like, it's tough to sort of and not, sort them all. Not all of them are in. You know, some they're like referring to these people from the past and stuff. But literally over a thousand people, a thousand names that that man has to keep straight in his damn head. Or I'm sure he's like Control F this name, and it's like no, nah, here it is four times. Like damn, I so, thought it came up with something new. So in the in the books, uh, instead of having uh, Bronn teach him how to fight, uh, they had Sir Illin Payne, who yeah, yeah. had his tongue cut out. Uh, so he couldn't talk, and Jamie trained with him to get better at fighting because he's like, who the fuck are you going to tell? Yeah. He didn't want anybody to know that he couldn't, that he was not good with his other hand. Right. Spoilers. Kind yeah. of. Not really. Yeah, I mean, if you're not caught up, not then a big it's, deal. Your, it's your own fault. Yeah. Sorry. Those Spoilers. books have been out a while. Yeah. If you're five years behind, like, I don't think you intend to catch up. No. Don't make us feel guilty because it's yeah. not, not going to work. Snape killed Dumbledore. <sighs> yeah, I said it. Fuck you. <laughs> Dobby dies, too. <laughs> what? So does Hedwig. Whoa! I know that was that was low. I know he was the first actor casted. <laughs> True fact. They was cast really? the owl before <laughs> anyone else. Yes. This is the owl. Perfect. Yeah. I I find this like 
kind of fan fiction a lot, especially a lot of stuff with, with Harry Potter. There's a lot of fan fiction, or a lot of like fan theories or alternate things. And one of them that I thought was really cool was um, if Harry, instead of getting the owl, got a snake uh, because of his parcel tongue thing. And like he, you know, he walks into the pet store and he hears like something in the back as it goes, finds the it's pet snake. And then all the things that would have happened had he had a snake with him the whole time. And, you know, like, snakes kind of act all agitated. He's like, what's up? I don't know. There's a big fuck-off snake in the pipes, man. I don't know. You got... You'll, you'll deal with it later. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I got your back, buddy. It's a little intimidating. I just, you know, I'm just a little corn snake, and he's enormous. And Oh, there'd be a lot of different scenarios where the yeah. snake could have just watched out and like, yo, dude. Yeah. Slytherin was all up or, in your shit. Or if, he, if, if the snake had eaten Ron's rat... That turned out to be that guy. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I I watch the Harry Potter movies, and I I do not empathize with Harry Potter. I don't really even feel. I mean, he was obviously written to be the main character, mm -hmm. but I feel like just because the story follows him, yeah. and not so much that he's like good or true or pure or mm -hmm. like like anything like specifically noble, because all of the side characters are always more lovable or, yeah. or something special about him that you can kind of akin yourself right. to. Whereas Harry Potter is just kind of bland. He's, but I, there's a lot of people I, that feel that way. There's a lot of people who think he's a fucking asshole and well, doesn't deserve the, any of the recognition he's getting anyway. I think part of it was intentional. Like he's not supposed to be too special. He's supposed to be the boy who lived. Yeah. His greatest claim to fame in the wizard, wizarding dying. world is that, is that his mom loved him is yeah. what I was going to say. Yeah. Just for that little oh, but I, I did read one thing where it, where it was talked about how uh, Hermione and Ron never should have been together, and it should have been Hermione and, and Harry, especially in that that last movie or two where they're like traveling in the tent and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and Ron fucks off for a while. Ron, <laughs> You're telling me they did not hook up in that tent? I have total faith in my young friends. <laughs> Their lust will not get the better of them. Yeah. I, I always felt bad for Jenny. Because I always felt like Ginny was just Harry's backup girl. Yeah, like he was I, trying I to go after, uh, what was it, Cho? Cho, yeah. I'm um, like, Ginny was perfect, Harry, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't she worshipped see it. you, dude. You didn't even see it. I don't know, I like Cho, actually. And Cho, you saw dead Dobby, you asshole? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, my God. That's pretty messed up. <laughs> But there's, there's I think you can tell what it is. <laughs> I feel like legitimately for them being in the wizarding world, yeah. like there is a very small amount of like useful magic going on. Like, or there's a lot of useful magic that's just being misused. Yeah, or like it's it's out prevalent in the real world. Like everybody has just magic in every single thing, but these kids who have this serious issue with Voldemort and all this thing, they don't touch on magic really at all, except in yeah. sort of a mild exploratory manner. Like, right. There's no like, hey, there's a big snake. Like, oh, let me bring out my lightning bolt gun or something. <laughs> you know, like, no, no giant fireballs. No, yeah. you think of any kind of magic really that like any scenario where like, oh, let me create a horse out of plants and ride away from right. these spiders, you know? Well, one issue with that, what you're saying, is that these kids, one, they're children, and they're still learning how to use magic. We all, and no one's teaching them how to use, how to make do those things that you're, you're telling them. Hermione has shown in every single movie that she is above and beyond what anyone would expect right. a child of her developmental, you know... Her, Especially for a mudblood. Yeah, her... Yeah. Her muggle, <laughs> sexist. That's her, their word. <laughs> her muggle nature. Uh, so yeah. like, I I feel like she should have just been whipping out tricks left and right. You're, like, and you're right. The episode whipping out tricks. Got it. <laughs> you know, like, oh, what's Spread wrong, Harry? Like, oh, you have this problem. Like, well, I happen to know a spell. Hold on. Drink yeah. this. Drink this. Snort a line of that. <laughs> 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 that wasn't part of the spell. All right, abracadabra. <laughs> boom. You have, Why a is it always <laughs> you have a new Patronus and an addiction. <laughs> uh, see, I want to see. I want to see the other side of that coin. Like I want to see. All right, think about uh, Harry. You, you've all seen the movies. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Harry uses flu powder for the first time, and he says Diagonally, 
and goes to the wrong place. Right, yeah. I want to see a whole movie at that little messed up wizarding world. That oh, yeah, the shit. Like, the, little, they like the wizard hood. Yeah. I want to see some wizard ghetto shit going down. You know <laughs> what I mean? There's Somebody so many. Somebody getting things. robbed at one there's point. There's so many things in, in the Harry Potter books, and, and it, this happens in a lot of things, where they'll just like throw out like a one-off joke kind of thing. And you're like, I want to know more about that shit. Like the where they you talk have about created canon. Yeah, where they talk about Dumbledore's brother and like something with goats, and they never, they don't say specifically what it is, but it's something like something happened with a goat, and he was like banished from a lot of shit because of it. And so, like, I would love to know what that story's about. Would you? I mean, I might not let like your the imagination answer, but I run wild for a moment. <laughs> would you? Because there's no way it's what everybody thinks it is. No, he I mean, probably no just like turned one inside out, and you know, or or gave it sentience some... and made it president of a small country. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that sounds. All right, baby, I'm gonna need a goat, some flu fl- <laughs> some flu powder, and some Bernie Bots ever flavored beans. Mm-hmm. Meet me at nine. You better hope you get that vomit flavored <laughs> bean. The leaky bean. cauldron. <laughs> Ooh, earwax, my favorite. What was the name of the show? Uh, uh, whipping out tricks. Whipping out tricks. Whipping out tricks. All right. Yeah. So Hermione, it's gonna be a shirt. <laughs> Hermione should have definitely been whipping out tricks. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. It's been a good year. Go for on, me. whip your trick out for Hermione, for the actress that plays Emma, Emma Watson. Emma, Emma Watson. Watson. What, what, what's happening? Uh, she had what? Beauty and the Beast. She Ooh, had yeah. uh, the Beast. new sci-fi flicks coming out. I'm again not real interested in sci-fi. But Which what? Oh, is that uh, the Circle? Is that what it is? I yeah, there's the one with her and Tom Hanks. I think so. Yeah, yeah. That looks pretty. That looks. That's one of those those movies where it's sort of like Black Mirror, where it's like this is something that could happen in the very near future, and it should terrify the fuck out of you. Because it's something with like, uh, it's it's very kind of 1984, very Big Brother. You know, we know what's going on with you. We like we're watching you. We know everything. We've checked your email and stuff like that. And and she's working for this company that that is helping the world, but possibly also helping itself in that regard. Okay. And and it it starts off when you when you first start watching the trailer for it, at least the one that I've seen, it starts off as uh, this very happy go lucky movie like oh she just got this job at this awesome place and everything is great and, you know, and then it starts k- taking like a little darker turn where somebody comes up and it's like hey we heard your dad's having this problem with this thing and she hasn't told anybody about it like it's just you know she's been looking up stuff online looking for you know cures for this disease or whatever and and then it starts taking this darker and darker darker turns where it's like oh this company could be could be bad so it looks pretty what are you I noticed you've been Beauty buying Beauty. a lot more underwear at Kmart recently <laughs> um, we there, didn't even know that place existed is there of problems course we at home <laughs> <laughs> we we know there are yeah. yeah so is there anything else she's doing is those two things you think I think it's just those two it still should be good. Yeah, she's she's on the up and up. Yeah, she's a solid I, actress. I think she I, has been for a while. A lot of people <laughs> apparently are upset that she didn't get the new the new uh, Doctor Who gig when they made Doctor Who a woman. By the way, Doctor Who is going to be a woman. Spoilers. Not really a spoiler. Spoilers. Oh, okay. But a lot of people are upset that it's not going to be Emma Watson. They were really pushing for her. But there's no way you can expect someone like her to, to commit to doing a, a TV That's series at the saying. height of her career. Yeah. She's not. She's not going to stop her, her big movie gigs to be on TV. And they're like, well, you know, t- TV actors getting paid like a million dollars an episode. One, no one on Doctor Who is getting paid a million dollars an episode. No, nope. that's, that's not that's happening. Friends money. Yeah, that's Friends money. It's HBO and money. That's also American money. That happens in American television. That ain't happening in Britain. And two, yeah, that's just not. Gonna <laughs> and Watson's not giving up her good gigs. For that, so. No, no. So that anyone who expected her to is selfish. And probably not smart. I don't know. Yeah. Speculations. That was inflammatory. Speculations. Yeah. Yeah, I know she's had some some good press about her her strong uh, approach on feminism. Yep. Uh, that's that's pretty much what I'm familiar with. I didn't see the Beauty and the Beast. I haven't either. Or, I haven't or either. a trailer for this new sci-fi. Mm-hmm. But it looks I know good. That, I know that she's been been a strong. Yeah, female yeah. voice for feminism. Yeah, I have seen several things that she's done. She was in uh, Perks of Being a Wallflower, yep. which is a really good movie, really good book. Um, made me cry. Noah. I didn't see Noah. I didn't either. I know she's in it though. With oh. Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe. 
I didn't see that one either. I didn't see it either, but I know it was in there. <laughs> no one here saw the movie. Well, I think it's because um, the consensus that I had heard was it was um, terrible. <laughs> okay. So that just didn't seem like a, a a worthy use of two and a half hours of my life. Two and a half hours long? Yeah, it's something like that. It's it's, yeah, it's, it's an epic. Dramatic. See, the last movie that I saw was, was also terrible. Well, it, was, was it was that? Captain Underpants. <laughs> I, t- I, w- I went to see it with my son uh-huh. uh, he was like alright we can either see this or Cars 3 right uh-huh. so I'm like alright Kevin Hart decisions decisions right? so that, that's what broke my decision Kevin I'm Hart like, I'm like it's it's Cars 3 which let's be real it's probably going to be about the same as Cars 2 or Cars 1 it's I didn't even see Cars 2 uh, there's cars in it and they talk oh yeah got it um, I didn't see planes either they personify cars and then run a run of the mill story around yeah them. I saw the first one so I understand I was, how that one worked. My son, my son, who is nine, uh, mm-hmm. absolutely loved Captain Underpants. Ah. I, I did not. So it's definitely for children. Definitely, like like not even you know some of those movies. You're like, all right, <laughs> you're right. No. no, this is bad. It was it was horrible. Got it. I appreciate the adult overtones here. <laughs> None of that. It no. was probably written for kids by kids. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Undertones. I said overtones. Could be both. Why be both? Underpants. Might just be blatant. It was definitely underpants. Yep. Definitely underpants. That's maybe why I was trying to go away from under. Yeah. <laughs> that had already been used previously. You know, I don't like to underpants say Underpants over tones. Yep. Got it. So, yeah. Yeah. So. Last movie I saw in theaters, Wonder Woman. That was fantastic. It was I very I've heard good. nothing but good things about it. Right? So good. You guys ever see the uh, Big Bang Theory? Yeah. I have. All right, I've seen a few episodes. I don't think you can live in America and not at least see one episode just by accidentally flipping through stations. That's pretty much how I've seen it. Um, but they have a new show uh, that is a spinoff. Oh, I think I heard about this. Uh, called Young Sheldon. Yeah. Yes. And it is basically about the um, the the tall, skinny, uh, smarmy. Yeah, the Jim Parsons character. Jim Parsons character. Is he the actor? Jim, Jim Parsons is the actor. Jim uh, Parsons well, is the actor. Well, is Jim, oh, asking, is Jim Parsons the actor in the new one? No, no. Okay, it's, so it's like a new a, Sheldon? It's a nine-year-old Sheldon. Oh, okay. And yep. he is going to high school. Mm. And so it's a... Basically, this kid actor is going to be playing a like super elitist, uh, super intelligent, Doogie Hauser style <laughs> show right. where he's... Trying where to, he's socially awkward and really and smart, incredibly yeah. pretentious, and, and trying to navigate through the the social maze of high school. Right. So Malcolm in the Middle, yeah. kind of, except more pretentious, I think. Yeah. And, and to Doogie an extreme. Housing. Although I, I don't know. I guess I always assumed that character was homeschooled. Who? It would Sheldon? actually it, his personality profile character, yeah. says to me homeschooled. You're like, right. and and not that there's anything wrong with homeschooling, but based on the way he acts. I can't see him interacting with kids. Yeah. Like I can't see him growing up with other kids his age and and being the way he is now. Because he would have learned something from all right. those interactions. <laughs> or he would have just felt so superior all of the time because he's younger than all of these high school kids and he's already yeah. so much smarter than them that he's like, I am a god. You are all tiny, stupid beings, and I'm just going to live my life. Yeah, but kids are mean. Except yeah, they are. That's not... The way he acts, like he doesn't act, he acts definitely smarter than everyone. He acts from superior, Wagon, but like, I don't know. I just don't see him doing well in high school. Now, has has the show come out yet? I I believe the first episode may have aired. Yeah. I've but seen a seen lot it? of yeah. Okay. I haven't seen it. So I want I want, I'm wondering how it goes. Like if it, you know, a lot of times these things don't actually go I, well. I try not to. Support. Joey, we're looking at you. Yeah, <laughs> I try not to support <laughs> child acting. Not not Joey, the guy that's been on the show. We were talking about Joey, the show. Yes, the spun off from Friends that was terrible. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. Joey. Yeah. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, what's the Family Guy spin off that didn't do so? Cleveland, Cleveland, the show. Cleveland Show. There's yeah. another one. <laughs> I've actually watched a few episodes and actually enjoyed <laughs> the Cleveland Show. I mean, it wasn't I, terrible. It just it was not. It was. It wasn't distinct enough. Yeah, yeah, it was Family Guy reskinned. Yeah. yeah, and you just almost didn't, literally <laughs> you didn't have the uh, the same connection to the characters, so you're watching it and it's just right. meh. They had some good jokes, some were laid on just a little too thick, you know, like Family Guy. Yeah, you know. they should have just saved those good jokes and kept them for Family Guy. Yep. But did they ever bring him back on a Family Guy? Yep. Yeah. Okay. 
I haven't, moved, I haven't actually watched We moved shows back to Quahog, Peter. Ha ha ha. That was better. <laughs> yeah, I haven't watched I haven't watched Family Guy in a while. Uh South Park is, is something I haven't watched in I haven't years. Seen a long time. But apparently no, they're, really t- they're still making that show. Yep, they sure are. Yeah. I uh, I've been watching Big Brother is mm. something that I've been staying on yep. on tune with, on page with. And normally it goes the other way around. I know we uh yeah, right? Cuz of uh, you know, the government yeah, <laughs> but um, no, I'm talking about the show Big Brother, right? Which is basically like a giant social studies experiment where they <laughs> yeah. they cram like 16 people into a house with no internet, right. no trying not to murder each other, no phone. But you know, if you do, let us know so we can film it. And there's a camera like in every single corner, mm. and like a microphone on everybody, and and like once a week, somebody has to be evicted out of the house, and the people in the house compete with each other for like immunity immunity and yeah. stuff like that and then out of the people who are left someone has to get voted out because right. there can be only one and that winner makes like 500 grand or like 360 after taxes or whatever and is this the one where america votes or the household votes household votes but america can choose their favorite and then there's some other sort of game mechanic that's like, involved okay. with that. Tempt them with like perks. Because like, I, I, I've seen it before, but I know they add something new every yeah. season. Like, what this time least. we're bringing in your mom. Next season we're bringing in your ex. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, they do. They there's always a, a twist mm. every season to keep the viewer participation up and to also make it a little more intriguing for yeah. the house members. I, mean, I think I think this year they had like 16 people start off and like one of the twists was just like, all right, welcome to the house. First day in the house. Twist, one of you is going home right now. We're bringing back somebody who used to be here. <laughs> and Well, and that, that didn't even have to happen, even though it was set up by the producers to basically be almost foolproof that it would. They took 16 strangers and the very first temptation that they offered them was that, hey, we're going to offer you a temptation. If someone takes it, a negative thing will occur to the entire household. Right. And so they were like, all right, the first person to hit their buzzer, and no one could see each other, they were all like petitioned off, Mm. gets $25,000. Oh, shit. And so, of course, you don't know all these 15 other people. You're like, I was trying for 500000 but I'll try for twenty five grand yeah, right now. I'll so, get that shit now. <laughs> of course, like half of them yeah. hit their buzzer. One guy wins it. And the twist was that an old player who got second place last year, who's obviously good at the game because mm-hmm. he got second place last year, comes back in the house. One of you motherfuckers has to leave now. So uh, did they had to then vote on who had to leave, so having they, known each other for minutes? Having known each did, other for did minutes. They, did they tell him who pushed the button? Nope. Oh, because I'd have been like, fuck that, dude. <laughs> yep. You're out. You got your money, get out. <laughs> right, right. It would have been, because obviously he would have been the obvious right. choice, but they don't, you know, that's that's not how they was play it, the game. Was it the guy? The guy? Did huh? he get sent home? No. No? no. Okay. That guy's doing very well. He's actually one of my picks. Oh, yeah? Yeah. All right. I'm going to have to check Making this out. Making money. Yeah, I've, I've seen... Uh, I've o- I've actually only seen this show with you. I think um, anytime that you you've watched it over at typically your house. Yep. Um, or when we were on vacation, <laughs> you watched it. Right, right. A few episodes, but yeah, I I've I've enjoyed watching the show, but I haven't I've never seek you know sought it out to to watch or anything. But I, I certainly like the social experiment of it, and and I and I always have like shows like that, and and less game showy like real world and and road rules and all those things uh seeing how these people interact and i and I, I find it really funny to watch the progression of how these shows have gone from their original inception of these kind of shows to now whereas before i feel like the producers didn't put a whole lot of thought into yeah. who they were putting in there there was like these four Just people seem fine who cares oh. yeah. We and got a few did, demographics that we're trying to cover. Yeah. Like you fit so, that one, you so fit that one. One of the funny your... things about Big Brother is like the way that it starts off. All of these people that they're bringing in, like for some reason, they're almost always just these gorgeous, like mm-hmm. perfect body people, and they're so fake and like cheesy, yeah. and they lay everything everything on super thick for like the first two weeks, three weeks, and then eventually it starts to devolve where yeah. you see who these people really are. Right. 
and them just like lying and cheating behind each other's back. Because now they're they're not conniving. looking. These producers aren't looking for people; they're looking for characters, mm-hmm. right? And in the and beginning, it, they're looking for characters, yeah. Like so that you know, America will get behind their right. favorite cartoon. Uh, character. It's not like all right. Well, there's like seven muscular white dudes with uh, <laughs> they that all look the same. I'm just gonna pick one. No, there's. There's the the hipster white dude, right. and then there's the jockey white dude, and then there's the camo white dude, or like yep. they they all have to have a character. So until you learn their names, you just I like that guy who wears camo a lot. So, the big gay cowboy. Yeah, the big gay cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's always WWE my <laughs> uh, World Wrestling Entertainment has has a show out where I they still refuse to call it that. They uh, it was WWF when I was growing I, up. I damn agree. it. Uh, the panda can kiss my ass. So uh, <laughs> they have this show called Tough Enough, uh-huh. which is essentially they take 16 competitors right, and, right, and they yeah. put them in the house and they, they have wrestling competitions. Uh-huh. Uh, and there was a guy on there who knew, like, fuck all about wrestling. Uh, he stayed about 40 pounds overweight while the rest of the ho- his housemates are, like, in the gym trying to look like Hulk Hogan. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he almost won. And I think that the only reason that he dis- didn't win is because one of the judges – was this guy named Michael Miz, who's from the real from world, the real, yeah. a wrestler. And he's like, wait a minute, I got a question for you. How many how many uh, reality shows have you been on? And the guy was like, six. <laughs> <laughs> he was just like, he was going to win wrestling by being a professional reality TV star. Oh, and he man. came so close. That's it's on, it's on uh, the WWE Network if you really? get a chance. I'll uh, check that out. Season. But yeah, that, that's, uh, <laughs> that's definitely something there is now, is that, that there's people who... They've figured out these games, and they know how to be the character that the people want. Mm-hmm. It's it's game theory with a lot of like social science behind yeah, it. Yeah, very um, much so. I feel like I could do quite well. I think you in could Big nail Brother. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm enough of a chameleon and and enough of a forward thinker that I could get in there and just really fuck some people <laughs> up. I would be amusing and entertaining, if nothing else. Yeah. Not not just that, but you could play up the. Uh, you know, I'm a veteran for the America vote. You know, America loves a white veteran. Let's let's <laughs> let's be real here. You yeah. have, that's a strategy used on these reality TV that's shows true. consistently. Yeah, that yeah. is true. I mean, I did it because I wanted to be in politics. So, you know, since politics is stupid, I'd rather be a reality <laughs> TV star. There you go. I didn't realize I hate politics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I think for Talkie Box, mm-hmm. you know, because we're a media institution. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. An institution. That's what I call it. Yeah, that's what <laughs> you call it, too. Are you going to vote somebody off the show? Is that, is that where you're going with this? I think that we should all submit tapes. To Big to, Brother? To, well, to or something? several reality shows. Yeah. I think we should just go ahead and pick out, like, four a piece uh-huh. and make up, like, the little mini tapes or yeah. whatever. I we'll, don't want to be on Tough Enough. I can tell you that. We'll, <laughs> you would do very well with that that gorgeous mane. Yeah, they could have I mean, called you the gorgeous mane. Oh, I, I want like to be on that. Tough Enough. I, I want like that. <laughs> I just don't want to get hit by other wrestlers. And I want to right, be your yeah. manager. I don't want to get my ass kicked too much. I want to be your heel manager. Yeah. <laughs> but but anyway, I don't know, Jason. I, I just speaking think of be voting, really move. do it. <laughs> speaking of voting, you make sure you vote for uh, make sure it happens. Chupacabra Kid episode yes, thank two. You. Please vote for Chupacabra episode two. Yeah, you can go to uh, TalkieBox.net and look up Chupacabra Kid episode two and vote for how you want the series to progress from there. And don't forget, uh, family, vote uh, on TalkieBox.net uh, on Chupacabra episode two. Yep. Yeah. Chupacabra Kid. Yep. The journey continues. It does. <laughs> and it will continue to continue if you vote. But if you don't vote, then we'll keep making it. Then I'll just be crying <laughs> and randomly messaging Jason, asking him when the next episode is coming out. I actually found I'm pretty good with uh, sound effects, having having made that last episode. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Just looking at his panda over here. Yeah, fuck that panda. Um, That's gross, Dave. Oh, my God. What's your problem? Uh, the band- they, were, they were very recently endangered, and they've only recently come off the list. You can't do things like that. They yeah. need other pandas now, doing now that first. Now they're just, first. like, threatened or something. Yeah. you got to let other pandas do that so they, they can did make that. panda babies. They did that already. Sicko. Uh, so um, what kind of, what kind of uh, show should we put old Justin on here? Um... Top Chef. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> top Chef. All right. Now, do they have that for not-so-top chef? Is there a bottom chef? I mean, yeah, it's called You Lost Top Chef. 
right. Top Chef Second or, Cuts. Or, yeah. I don't know I what do this thing is, but uh, I'm going to cut it up and throw it in the pot. Uh, and we'll uh, add some bacon. That and is a we'll brick see. of cocaine. Well, <laughs> then I am bound to win. You're going to love it. <laughs> Especially with bacon. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Bacon Coke. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think of what. I, I haven't had cable in four years now, so I don't know all the reality shows there actually are. Pretty much just think well, of a know. think you're, of a cable television channel. Because I don't have cable? Yeah, yeah you, I, thought, I thought we were doing movies and stuff after this. No cable, I got it. <laughs> so think of a cable television channel, uh-huh. and then uh, <laughs> just assume their identity, and yeah. then just imprint that onto a random group of 12 strangers like okay. cmt country music television yeah. like they've got a reality show uh, i don't know what it is actually, but i guarantee you it's a lot like country music <laughs> television they did i remember they did have a an american idol style show for country music and my friend ben actually went on it and did very well until it got to the point where he had to play guitar and he doesn't know how to play guitar <laughs> he could sing great but Apparently, you have to play guitar to be a country music singer. Or and an accordion? Could, Does, what about an accordion? No. He no. Not uh, what about a instrument. fiddle? No. So bacon coke's not turning <laughs> out so well. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Man, um, one of these days, you guys are going to get to see these doodles. Yeah. And, and they're going to be, be like, thoroughly Justin actually unimpressed. took part. <laughs> yeah. Thoroughly unimpressed. Yeah. Um, but no, Listen, I don't, you can't do want they, doodles and full participation. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. I don't want doodles. Do you think? You're do a they still fucking make, liar? Do they still went the real world. Uh, I don't know. I don't know either. You're on your magic box there. Look it up. But I know they. I don't you think know, so. Like, Lifetime as a channel. Like take that, slap it on a reality TV show. Lifetime. That's called lifetime. Lifetime or, or oxygen. <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's just breathing. That's just people breathing. Oh, that's a channel. Yeah, that shows that, that caters to a certain demographic, mm-hmm. and so their reality shows also cater to that same demographic. I mean, okay, what's it called? I I'm, I don't know. No, I know BET has a reality show. Do they? Yeah. So just uh, to follow up on what Dave asked earlier, the real world is in fact still going. It is currently on season thirty-three. Jesus, third uh, season. 33 episode 2 aired on June 1st, 2017. That was a long that was time over ago. a month and a half ago. I know. <laughs> Did they, were they, they like, man, screw high, it. Yeah, like, no, this isn't working. <laughs> <laughs> this just isn't going to work. People Let's finally got sick of that shit. Like, second episode, and we're canceled. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming to the end of the show. Oh, no. Really? <laughs> It's that time. It's I'm the not, least enthusiastic you've ever been about the I'm end of the show. Ready. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> ready for this. So today I learned that the real world is still going after 30 possibly seasons. maybe maybe not after June 1st or whatever. And that Dave hates pandas. Oh, that was going to be mine. I was <laughs> going to say today I learned Dave fucks pandas. <laughs> not what I said. I said someone else can fuck that panda. Uh, you weren't specific. Mm. Um, did you say someone else, or did you say someone? Because if you said someone, still probably you. Is that, well, actually, what I said was, fuck that panda. Is that yeah. a broken That's toe? That's more of a command. Yes, that else. is Dave's broken toe, his broken ring toe. That's not what it is. Uh, the doctor actually informed me I did not break it in half. I just I chipped part of the bone off. So oh, it, it, it's still it in so there. Hard. Yeah, it like I guess just knocked the bones together. And like a, like a piece of tooth. Yeah. Well, What'd you learn today? This. I learned that Talkie Box needs more exposure. You in want me to take my shirt off? In the reality world. Oh, okay. Yes, take your shirt off. All right. Spin it around your head. <laughs> we should yep. have a Talkie Box reality show. Uh, that's called this podcast. <laughs> take auditions. <laughs> that's called you. <laughs> that's You won. That's Way to go. Oh, here's your end. You won this week. Yeah. We we took all the people that had submitted to uh, calling me back, <laughs> and uh, and you came up at the top of that list. Yep. All right. What, well, do, I, what do I get? Miraculously so. Uh, you you went a ride home, sir. Yeah, yeah. And a free, um, you know, pop filter to lick. <laughs> yeah, you can you can lick every bit of that. Yeah. 
I'll, I'll, I'll pass. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Justin, what'd you learn today? I learned that uh, you broke your toe, uh-huh. and that apparently there has been a national emoji day that nobody has ever given a fuck about. That's true. Yes. Yep. Yep. That's it. You well, watch your mouth. All right. Uh, <laughs> You've got poop on your shoe. Oh, it's my emoji shoes. Although I'm still it, it kind of like the face on it looks like <laughs> the bear from from uh, Brickleberry. Brickleberry. It does. Yeah. Kind of. What did you learn today, Dave? I already said that I learned uh, that r- the real world's still going. Well, what else did you learn? That's literally it. Oh. Yeah. I'll try to make him the give the very us. last statement of the show <laughs> is what Dave took his learning experience yeah, from. <laughs> Everything else just f- filters yep. right <laughs> out. Just, just going in and just... Honestly, Once like, we cut this off every, and we ask him what he learned, he will have said nothing. Yeah, I've I, learned Every nothing. time I have to edit these shows... I, you know, I'm, I'm putting the description. I'm like, what the hell did we talk about? <laughs> I just black out for an hour. I wake up and they're like, time to smoke a cigarette. No, it was like <laughs> tricks. It was tricks and something. Oh, yeah. Uh, wh- whipping out tricks. Whipping out <laughs> tricks. <laughs> Whip out your whipping tricks, out guys. Tricks. Yeah. yeah, don't fuck around, Hermione. All right. Whip so, out your trick. Uh, check us out on YouTube, which you're probably watching this on, mm-hmm. and subscribe to there, and like things, and comment on stuff, and go vote on uh, Chupacabra Kid on TalkingBox.net. If, and you, if you don't you vote on Chupacabra Kid, I'm spoiling Game of Thrones next week. Ooh, threats. Yeah. I like it. Mickey just admitted to being to here continue. next week. And if you are watching this, and you are not <laughs> subscribed, raise your hand, look at your hand, Hit now that put sp- that on the on the subscribe button, and click it. Yep. Or or on your mouse if you don't have one of those high speed touchscreen computers. Yeah, or a tablet or a phone or whatever it is that you use. Either way, subscribe. Yep. And thanks. Thank have a great you. night. Good night, everybody.